Thank you all for attending our patient education webinar today. We are happy to be here this afternoon to show you some information about fibroid treatment options, including the Sonata treatment. We are being hosted today by Dr. David Schwartz, and he will start this presentation momentarily. If you have questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to type them into the chat, and I will be sure to facilitate those questions to Dr. Schwartz. Dr. Schwartz, I'm going to turn it over to you. When you're ready for me to move to the next slide, you could just indicate that and I will take care of that for you. Okay, Dr. Schwartz, can you test your microphone for me? Oh, okay. There now I'm go. on mute. There you go. Thank Can you. Can you all hear me now, I hope? Yes, sir. <laughs> all right. Well, once again, I'm uh, David Schwartz. I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio, and it's a pleasure to be able to speak to you about heavy menstrual bleeding uh, due to uterine fibroids. Um, fibroids and heavy menstrual bleeding affect many, many women in our country, and there's a lot of different treatments for it. Although recently there's been some newer advanced treatments which can help a woman um, obtain a very good quality of life. What are fibroids? Well, let's start by saying the uterus or the womb is a muscle um, in the center of a woman's body. And fibroids are smooth muscle tumors or growths within either the wall or the interior surface or the exterior surface of the uterus. You can see in this picture here, um, you've got a fibroid within the center of the uterus, you've got one going into the cavity, and you've got one on the surface of the uterus. That's all muscle tissue that's now growing uncontrolled and causing, unfortunately, uh, pain, discomfort, and heavy bleeding. Fibroids have other names. They're called myomas or lyomyoma. Um, if a fibroid develops into cancer, it could be called a lyomyosarcoma. Um, fibroids can also be in the cervix, and sometimes they can break off from the uterus and can be attached to various um, organs within the abdominal cavity. Next slide. are the symptoms and treatment options for fibroids? Well, there are lots of different symptoms depending on where they're located, and there's lots of different treatment options. Some we've had around for years, and some that are very, very new and very, very effective. Unfortunately, the symptoms are varied, and I'm sure I don't have to tell anyone who's listening what some of those symptoms are, but intimacy is affected, uh, days off of work, canceling plans, packing extra clothes, missing fun events, and having periods that last for 20 days, and then you have a couple days without any bleeding, and then you start bleeding again. So they really affect the quality of life, most likely if it's due to pain and if it's due to bleeding. Now, there are three specific locations for fibroids. Submucous fibroids are within the center of the uterine cavity, um, the center where your lining sloughs off and you have periods every month. And so with submucous fibroids, a woman will have heavy periods and have difficulty conceiving, difficulty getting pregnant. But the fibroids are in the center of the uterine muscle, in the center of the wall of the uterus, that's called intramural fibroids. They also cause heavy bleeding but they can affect uh, your feeling like bloating and they can be pressing against the bladder and they can cause frequent urination. There are also fibroids on the outside wall of the uterus and they can cause pain or bloating and various degrees of discomfort. All of these fibroids though can affect the ability of the uterus to constrict down 
when you're having a period and a woman can have very very heavy periods and or prolonged periods next slide Seventy percent, so that's going to be seven out of ten white women and more than eight out of ten black women have uterine fibroids before the age of 50. Fortunately, many times these fibroids are not causing bleeding or, ca or causing pain. They could be small and we just notice them when we do a pelvic exam or when a workup for abnormal bleeding and a sonogram are done. Um, however, up to one out of two women with fibroid tumors will experience symptoms. And the most common symptoms are going to be heavy bleeding, pelvic pain, and infertility. Each year in our country, in the United States, upwards of 2 million women undergo some form of treatment for uterine fibroids. And there is a congenital association meaning with fibroids, meaning that if your sister or your mother or your grandmother had fibroids, there's a good chance that you are going to develop them too. Next slide. How do you know if the symptoms that you're having are caused by uterine fibroids? Well, first of all, let's talk about the symptoms again, the most common of which is heavy menstrual bleeding along with prolonged or painful periods. Painful periods has a term, it's called dysmenorrhea, or your quality of life is affected. You're missing out on doing things because you're always bleeding, you're always dealing with the heavy bleeding from the fibroids. Fibroids can also cause dyspareunia, which is pelvic pain or discomfort with intimacy. You'll go to your physician, he or she will do a pelvic exam and fibroids are going to be suspected because when one does the pelvic exam, they feel the enlargement of the uterus. If we need to further confirm that they're fibroids, there'll be some type of testing done, the most common of which is a pelvic ultrasound. A pelvic ultrasound is a sonogram. A sonogram is taking a picture of the uterus with sound waves, and those sound waves will bounce off of the fibroids differently than they'll bounce off of normal uterine tissue. And so we'll be able to see a picture of the fibroids. In the hospital, you might have a CAT scan or an MRI or other diagnostic tests to determine, determine the size of the fibroids and where these fibroids are located. But if you have fibroids, and you have the symptoms of fibroids, it doesn't have to be that way. There is a tremendous amount of options for you, treatment for you to improve your quality of life and to stop the bleeding. Next slide. Dr. Schwartz, I have a question uh, from- Sure, that's great. Um, someone wanted to know if you're able to see fibroids when they're very small or do you have to wait until they're larger to be able to know that you that you could see fibroids? Um, well, you can see fibroids if they're small, but when we say small, we need to actually document the size we're talking about. If a fibroid is one or two millimeters, you're not going to see it. If a fibroid is one or two centimeters, so say it's the size of an inch, you're going to see it. But a fibroid that's an inch is not really causing you any difficulty. Your doctor may see it when you're having a sonogram for a pregnancy or for some type of ovarian cyst or something. Now, when your fibroids are eight centimeters or, or 10 centimeters, you can feel them, you can see them, you can touch them. They are very, very apparent. Thank you. So moving on, patients are going to try to find some treatment for this heavy menstrual bleeding or this dysmenorrhea, painful periods, or this dyspareunia, painful intimacy. Unfortunately, women will wait on the average of 3.6 years, and some women will wait more than five years to actually 
have treatment done. 80% of women, that's, that's um, four out of five women, don't want surgery, don't want a procedure that's going to put them in the hospital for a long period of time, that's gonna take them out of work, that's gonna take them out of their daily activities. And a good number of women also want to preserve their uterus. In the past, we would do a hysterectomy and take the fibroids out or do a surgical procedure where we would cut open the uterus and take the fibroid out and then sew the uterus up and then uh, put the uterus back in, in the abdomen and close the patient up. We don't have to do that type of procedure anymore. Now, the earlier we pick up the fibroids, the better it is because it's much easier to treat a small fibroid versus a large fibroid. So I encourage patients and women all over, don't wait when you have heavy bleeding. Don't wait when you have pelvic pain. Go and talk to your doctor and find out what options are available. And that's what I wanna talk about now. Next slide. So what are the fibroid treatment options? You have choices. You have options that you can pick and choose what's gonna work for you based on your desire to have children in the near future, based on your desire to have a major surgery or a minor surgery, based on the quality of life that you're having and what you want. Next slide. Those options are varied. They include medical or hormonal treatment. So that's gonna be giving medications. That includes hysteroscopic myomectomy. Um, it's done in a doctor's office or surgery center where you put a camera into the uterus and actually look at the fibroid if it's in the center of the uterus in the lower part of the muscle where you can see it and you can scrape it out. There's something called uterine artery embolization where a radiologist will go ahead and inject small little pellets into the arteries that are feeding the fibroid and then the fibroid dies there's a fair amount of pain and not not always does it work but that is an option there is a laparoscopic laparoscopy is when you take a telescope place it through a woman's umbilicus or belly button and look inside or an open laparoscopic or open myomectomy so you're going to go inside the abdomen and you're gonna look at the fibroid, you're gonna cut the uterus open, and you're gonna take the fibroid out, and there's a hysterectomy. Hysterectomy is taking out the entire uterus. So up until a year or two ago, those were the five options that we had. Next slide. Medical, we use birth control pills or hormonal drugs to shrink the fibroids. Sometimes we use these drugs to shrink the fibroids prior to surgery. Sometimes we use these drugs trying to shrink the fibroid prior to getting pregnant. Well, it works, it preserves the uterus, but it may not always improve the symptoms. Sometimes birth control pills will make the fibroids enlarge. There are a medication called GnRH agonists or antagonists, these block the production of estrogen and cause the fibroids to shrink. So temporarily, a woman will be in menopause, but it's only temporary. Once you stop the medication, her estrogen and progesterone starts working again, but they can cause osteopenia or osteoporosis, bone loss, and the fibroids will come back when those medications are discontinued. Next, <clears throat> hysteroscopic myomectomy, there's no incision. As I said earlier, a surgical instrument called the hysteroscope goes into the uterus through the cervix <clears throat> and attempts to cut out the fibroid while the patient is awake or asleep. It is not gonna be painful but it can be performed under anesthesia if there's difficulty getting into the endometrial cavity. Um, only about 20% of fibroids can be treated. It's those fibroids that are submucosal. Those are the ones that are very close to the 
endometrial cavity. And unfortunately, they only work about 15% of the time because many patients will need a follow-up procedure in about five years. Next slide. <coughs> Through an artery embolization, I mentioned small particles blocking the flow of blood into the arteries that feed the uterus. Specifically, it's going to be the arteries that feed the fibroid. Um, you might have a lot of pain. Many patients do have a lot of pain with this because you're killing the muscle. So the muscle's still there. So I describe it like somebody having a heart attack. The heart is muscle and when the muscle of the heart gets blocked, that's a myocardial infarction. What we're causing is an infarction of the fibroid, and uh, that can cause a lot of pain and a lot of complications afterwards. It's usually a two-week recovery, and unfortunately, the fibroids may come back. 30% um, or three out of 10 patients will require an additional treatment after about five years. Next slide. <coughs> Laparoscopic or open myomectomy, as I said, is getting into the abdomen, either through the laparoscope or um, through a small incision um, and actually cutting open the abdomen as a major surgery. Again, this preserves the uterus. General anesthesia is always required. Unfortunately, the fibroids may come back because you're cutting out as much of the fibroid as you can get or as you can see. Patients may require inpatient stay or not, and usually one to two weeks of home recovery. Um, if it's a laparoscopic myomectomy, if it's an open myomectomy, it can be up to six weeks <coughs> of home recovery. Next slide. Myomectomy has been the most common treatment in the past, which involves the surgical removal of the entire uterus. Hyster is uterus, ectomy is removal. A hysterectomy is removal of the uterus. And when we say hysterectomy, we're just talking about uterus and cervix. Total hysterectomy or total is uterus and cervix. It is not including the fallopian tubes or the ovaries. Unfortunately, once that's done, childbearing is out of the question. Once that done, maybe menopause is gonna be a lot quicker. It requires general anesthesia and requires an overnight or a hospital stay or two or three days and up to six weeks of home recovery. So these five treatments, medical hormonal therapy, hysteroscopic myomectomy, uterine artery embolization, laparoscopic or open myomectomy, and hysterectomy are what was in our bag of tools for the last 30 years. <coughs> Unfortunately, that's all we had until recently. And now we have a new treatment for uterine fibroids. Next slide. It's called Sonata. So what is Sonata treatment? Well, Sonata is using RF energy. RF energy is radio frequency energy. Essentially, we're going to put this little device into the uterus through the cervix, like when we do a hysteroscope, only at the end of this device, there's going to be a little sonogram probe. And the sonogram probe is going to show us exactly where the fibroid is anywhere in the uterus, submucal, mucosal, intramural, subserosal. And then out of this probe is gonna be these couple of wires that are gonna come out and we're gonna see the wires or the probes as they're called on the ultrasound, the sonogram. And we're gonna measure how big the fibroid is. We're gonna evaluate our entire uterus and we're gonna step on a pedal and we're going to ablate the fibroid. What that means is we're using radio frequency energy. Just think of it as energy waves. And those energy waves are only going to go to the zone of the uterus where that fibroid is. We can pinpoint the fibroid, whether it's small, medium, or large. 
and we can ablate that fibroid anywhere from two to six minutes it takes. And then if there's another fibroid, we can do that one and another fibroid, we can do that one. There's no cutting. There's no opening the abdomen. There's no laparoscopy. We're going through the vagina. We're going through the cervix. We're going through openings that are already existing. So there's much less pain. There's much less recovery that goes on. So this Sonata treatment will treat many different types of fibroids. It's incision free. There is no cutting. There is no incision. And I think the most important thing is it preserves the uterus. So you're not having a hysterectomy. You're not having major surgery. You go back to work the next day. Over the next four to six weeks, that fibroid just disintegrates and is reabsorbed by your body. And it doesn't require general anesthesia or an overnight hospital stay. This is amazing. This is something that's new. This is something that we can provide patients now who have fibroids that are causing abnormal bleeding, but want to preserve their uterus, don't want a very prolonged recovery, don't want a large operative procedure or a risky procedure. Next slide. So every woman really deserves this to be done. Once again, I'll show you how it's done. The doctor will pass the Sonata handpiece into the vagina and into the uterus. So on the right side there in the bottom, that white thing is the handpiece. And then on the other side, you're looking at the uterus and we'll show this. Um, okay, we can um, go ahead and, and run it. That's fine. So the patient's in a dorsolithotomy position. Her legs are in stirrups. Um, there are pads on her legs just to prevent any electrical shock. The device is inside the uterus. Right now, we're going to use the sonogram part of it, and we're going to look through the higher uterus, and we see that fibroid there on the left side. It looks like a quarter. We're honing in on it right now. Then we have these probes that come from the Sonata handpiece, which will deliver radio frequency to treat the fibroid. So what's gonna happen is once we make sure we see the entire fibroid, we see the um, ends of the uterus and where the uterus begins, where the uterus ends, and the parameters that we want to ablate or burn, we then will measure all of that and we place our probe into the center of the fibroid. Again, we're going to use our sonogram to make sure that we're in that fibroid and we're nowhere else. We're going to make sure that the area we're going to ablate is not going to ablate normal or healthy uterine tissue. Then we're gonna step on a pedal and we start the ablation. You can see the probes going in right now. We're making sure we're in the fibroid correctly and only in the fibroid. And as I said, we then step on a pedal and radio frequency will be delivered. We will see outgassing or we'll see the fibroid kind of ablate and we'll see it shrink somewhat while we do the procedure, but it's gonna take four to six weeks uh, for a complete ablation and for that fibroid um, to uh, be reabsorbed. One out of two patients are back to their normal activities in a day. And interestingly enough, I saw a patient that was done two months ago and she had a fibroid that was eight centimeters. That's the size of a grapefruit. And her uterus is normal size right now. So it is amazing and so interesting. She was one of my last patients today. <clears throat> Next slide. So um, this is a new procedure. Um, sometimes patients will have more than one fibroid and we can treat any number of fibroids at the same time while the device is in the endometrial cavity. It has to be repositioned. We pull it down a little bit, we turn it a little bit, and then we use the uh, ablative aspects of it to treat additional fibroids. As I said, these fibroids will shrink over time, reducing or eliminating any symptoms. Next slide. 
Sonata treatment was first available in Europe and it's now available in the United States. You might ask, how many patients have we done? Well, I believe it was 3,000 um, a little bit ago and we're working on getting over 4,000 patients that have been treated worldwide. This is approved by the US Food and Drug Administration, so it is safe. In medicine, we look for evidence-based medicine. We look for studies that show things work based on their medical expertise. And over 35 articles have been published in medical journals that have concluded that the Sonata procedure is safe and effective for treatment for symptomatic uterine fibroids, those fibroids that are preventing fertility, that are causing bleeding, that are causing pain, that are there existing and affecting your quality of life. Next slide. What about the results? One of the trials, and this is evidence-based medicine, 147 women were treated with the Sonata procedure and then followed for three years. One out of two went back to work the next day. 95%. So 19 out of 20 had a tremendous reduction in their menstrual bleeding, so it worked. And 94% or 19 out of 20 were satisfied with their treatment at three years. So not only does this have to be repeated or do the fibroids come back, fibroids are gone. And the patients don't have the symptoms that the fibroids caused. Nine out of 10 patients reported improved symptoms at three years. Now, there can be other fibroids that we don't see at the time that we do the procedure, and they could grow over a period of time for three years. But hopefully within those three years, the patient had an improved quality of life and was able to have normal periods, was able to conceive and have a normal pregnancy and healthy children if that was her desire. Next slide. And Dr. Schwartz, I have a few questions that have come in. Great. Um, the first one is, can fibroids return after a treatment like Sonata? So the fibroid that is treated with the Sonata in all likelihood will not return. However, there are new fibroids that can develop. So a woman may come into the office and she has two large fibroids and there may be a very tiny little speck there. There's nothing I can do with the spec, but those two large fibroids I can treat. And it may take, and they are not going to return. They are not going to come back. However, a new, a de novo fibroid, that spec that could be there that I may not even have been able to see over a course of three to five years may then grow to be a fibroid and that patient may need to have this repeated. However, she will have been able to keep her uterus, not have any downtime, not have any heavy bleeding, pain, or difficulty conceiving in that period of time. Thank you. Another question is, I've been told I need to wait until my fibroids get too big and near menopause, then get a hysterectomy. Can I be treated sooner? Um, absolutely. Now, there are physicians who are trained in this procedure. There are physicians still learning it, and there's some who don't want to learn it and just do hysterectomies. So what you need to do is ask around, go to the web, um, go to um, Sonicare's website, um, Sonata, excuse me, Sonata's website, and um, look for physicians in your area who are doing this procedure and get a second opinion. Um, if somebody told you to wait until menopause and then get a hysterectomy, that doesn't make sense to me. What are they doing for you right now? You're bleeding now. Menopause occurs between the age of 48 and 58. And if you're 35, that's a long time. If you're 45, that's still a long time to work when you could have this very simple procedure done and be without the symptoms of those fibroids for the rest of your reproductive life. Thank you. Another question, what kind of anesthesia is used and do you have to have it? So um, I have done this procedure in my office under local anesthesia. 
and I've done this procedure in my office under um, light general anesthesia, um, twilight anesthesia, it's called. So you don't have to have it. There are physicians who do procedures in their office. There are patients who are great candidates for procedures in my office and other physicians' offices. Um, however, if a patient has tremendous difficulty just having a pelvic exam in a physician's office, she's really not a candidate for this to be done under local, whereas there are other patients who this can be done under local. And when I say local, they usually get a Xanax, a couple of Percocet or Demerol, a Phenergan, and local anesthesia um, medicine, just like the dentist gives you when he or she is working on your teeth. So it can be done under um, the with the absence of general anesthesia. Thank you. Um, one more question. When can I be sexually active after the Sonata treatment? Within a week. Um, it doesn't affect sexual activity or the ability to have sex or the desire to have sex. It'll be when you want to. Usually there, there there's, might be spotting for a day just from um, manipulating the cervix, manipulating the uterus, um, but there's really no time after the procedure that you have to wait before you resume normal um, intimacy. Thank you. Again, if you have other questions, please put them in the chat and I'll be happy to read those to Dr. Schwartz. Thank you, Tara. We can move on to the next slide. Um, so if, if you were the patient whose doctor said, wait until you get closer to menopause and then we'll do a hysterectomy, you're the patient who probably should go to sonatatreatment.com and um, speak with a nurse advocate to learn more about Sonata, speak with a physician, uh, get the name of physician in your community um, who does this procedure, I happen to do this procedure, and see if, it's go if you're a candidate for this procedure. Most of the type of fibroids are um, candidates for this procedure, although there are some fibroids that we call pedunculated, um, in which they're on a stalk. And if they're on a stalk that's greater than 50%, we are not able to ablate the fibroid because it's, it, it's not gonna get reabsorbed and it's gonna have to be removed. But most fibroids can be um, removed with the Sonata treatment and the doctor will be able to do a sonogram and make that determination. So if you're interested, please contact that website. If you wanna call me, um, you're welcome to do that too. I'm listed too. Um, you can go to the website and there's a list of physicians in your community who are doing this procedure and you can contact one of them. Next slide. Thank you, I have two more questions that have come in. Um, how, after a consultation, how soon can I have the Sonata treatment? Do I have to have other tests or procedures before Sonata? That's a great question. Um, the con I, an initial consultation, you would talk with your physician, but then that physician's gonna wanna do a certain type of sonogram to see what size your fibroid is, how large your fibroid is, where your fibroid is, and probably some blood work. After that, you can have the procedure as soon as we can get it scheduled in the OR or the doctor's office and your insurance company will approve you to have the procedure done. Thank you. Uh, another question that's come in is, can Sonata work on bigger fibroids like 10 centimeters? I was told mine is similar to the size of an orange. Yes, Sonata, Sonata can work on 10 centimeter fibroids. Sometimes we have to do a double uh, ablation on it. Sometimes we can shrink the fibroid and you may have to have a repeat procedure in three or four months. Um, but I'm not too concerned about the size of the fibroid as I'm concerned about where that fibroid is. If it's outside the uterus on a pedicle or a stalk, that's an issue. But if it's inside the uterus, then in all likelihood, um, the size is not that much of an issue. Okay, and another question is, I've tried birth control pills and my symptoms have worsened. Should I seek another option before Sonata or try a different procedure? That would be something to discuss with your physician. Um, seeking another option, there are medications that you can take um, to shrink the fibroid, but they are temporary 
you stop the medication and then the fibroid's going to grow again. It depends where you are in your reproductive cycle. If you're um, close to menopause, um, you may want to consider medication. And because once you get into menopause, you're not producing estrogen anymore. And there's a good chance your fibroids will shrink and disappear on their own. If you're not close to menopause, um, but you want to get pregnant, um, and the option is doing the Sonata or taking a medication for a period of time, you can do that. But once again, as I explained earlier, the medication is not going to work after a period of time. It's going to shrink that fibroid, and then unfortunately, the fibroid will return. The Sonata, the beauty of the Sonata, is that not only do we shrink or get rid of the fibroid, but that fibroid is not going to return. It's gone. <clears throat> if there's another fibroid there that we can't see and starts to grow, that can become an issue in the future. So getting back to your question, um, I would discuss it if you were my patients. I would give you the options and let you know the pros and cons of the other options. But taking a birth control pill is estrogen, which is going to stimulate the growth of the fibroids. And that's the thing I would definitely not do. I wouldn't try any different birth control pills. I would try another option depending on the size and the location of your fibroid. All great information, thank you. Another question is, how soon do you have a sonogram after the Sonata procedure? I usually wait six weeks and then I wait three months. However, if it's six weeks, the uterus is back to normal size, I'm not gonna do another ultrasound. Thank you. I was told that I need a myomectomy. How many opinions should I explore before making the best decision for me? Well, um, I assume that your physician who's asking this question said they wanna do an open myomectomy or a laparoscopic myomectomy or a hysteroscopic myomectomy. That is an option, um, but there are other options. If you don't want a surgical procedure, then the Sonata or any of the RF treatments um, might be a better option for you. How many second opinions do you get? Well, I would get a second opinion from somebody who does Sonata. And then if you are still undecided, get a third decision. Um, but it's possible that the first physician who gave you that information, he or she isn't aware of Sonata, isn't trained in Sonata, or doesn't want to learn, or doesn't do, or doesn't want to learn Sonata, and um, is not going to present that to you. Thank you. Those are all of the questions that I have in the chat. If anyone has any others, please put them in there now. Um, Dr. Schwartz, do you have any other um, closing comments that you'd like to give? Um, I, I hope I've been clear. Um, fibroids are a problem for many women in the US and Europe. Um, fibroids cause heavy bleeding. Fibroids can cause infertility. Fibroids can cause pain. There are a number of options for fibroids that we have used for the past 30 years, but now we have something new. We have something that is not invasive, that is not surgical, that is extremely safe and extremely effective. We want more and more physicians to learn how to do this. We want more and more patients to ask their physicians about the option of this procedure. And um, if you have any further questions, feel free to go to sonatatreatment.com, go to the physicians who are listed as doing this and call one of them. And I'm more than happy to talk to people on the phone about this if they like. Thank you very much, Dr. Schwartz. It's been a great uh, session of information. This session has been recorded as everyone heard when we started it. So we can distribute that via email. Um, and as Dr. Schwartz said, please visit sonatatreatment.com where you could find a treating physician in your area or be connected to Dr. Schwartz directly um, or speak to one of our Sonata nurse advocates. Thank you all very much and have a great after evening. Thank you, Tara. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.